Hey everyone, Ryan here, MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 2023 Advent Calendar. Given set number 75366 with 320 pieces, it has the new normal price of Advent Calendars at 45 US dollars. Inside, you'll find 24 unique builds and minifigures to lead you through December all the way till Christmas Day, and this is a box art that depicts Endor because it is the return of the Jedi anniversary, so they've got quite a bit of Endor stuff and the return of the Jedi stuff inside, but not exclusively Return of the Jedi, which is nice. And then on the back of the box, it shows more of the builds and has a bit of Inception, literally the box on the box. Before we open it, you must know this advent calendar was provided to me for free by German retailer JB Spiel Warren. So if you're looking for this Lego Star Wars advent calendar, check them out with the link in the description below. Now to open this advent calendar properly, all I have to do is cut the two tape seals on the back. This will allow the flap and like play area to drop down. And then you can also see all 24 numbered day tabs that you can open one at a time, day by day, or like we're about to do all at once. One great thing about this box, as you can see, is that bottom flap lays flat on the table right after cutting it. I didn't have to put anything heavy on top of it to get it to lay flat. It just lays flat. That's great. Now to open any given day, you just have to push in on the thumb tab and then pull out. It'll either show you the minifigure or it will show you the building instructions for the build, which aren't as easy to follow as normal LEGO building instructions, but it's definitely doable. And to not spoil which days have which items for this review, I'm going to show you the minifigs first and then I'll show you the builds. That way, if you want to buy this and still enjoy some daily surprises during Christmas, you still can. Running through the minifigs worst to best, super unfortunately the worst figure in the set is a clone trooper and it's the 212th clone trooper. Enough has been said about this figure over the last year. I think it's pretty obvious what's wrong with this figure. At least he's got a cool blaster, I guess. Next is Endor Leia, and I really like the idea of having the character here because she goes really nicely with the Ewok that we have in this set, especially because she has the cookie to feed to him. I think that's a really fun thing. However, if you've seen my Endor diorama review, you'll know that this is a super inaccurate figure and one that is worse than what we had almost 10 years ago. So big thumbs down here as far as the quality, but good idea. Next, we have a standard B1 battle droid, and I could have gone for some Christmas colors or something here. It's just another battle droid for the collection. At least the pit droid delivers on my Christmas wish. It does have articulable arms and feet, although like they might fall off like they just did there, so they can be a little hard to work with. But yeah, he's a little bit of a fun guy, and if you have some studs to stand him on, you can pose him and have more fun with him than I am now. Next, we have an ugly Death Star sweater emperor. He's got lightning in one hand and eggnog in another. Not as great as some of the Santa theme figures in the past, but still a fun one to add to your ugly Christmas sweater Star Wars collection. Next, we have Omega, who was previously only in the $170 Justifier set that not a lot of people love, so getting that same great figure in this $45 set is going to be a big draw for a lot of people. This year's holiday themed gonk droid is a reindeer, and it just looks awesome. He has a black nose, so not Rudolph with a red nose, although I guess you could switch it out with a red stud if you would like. He's got the antlers, and then he's he got that cute little tail on the back, so a little reindeer gonk droid for your gonk collection. Finally, we have the best figure in this set, the ugly Christmas sweater Ewok. Love the contrast of the bright green and the bright white. I think those colors just combine phenomenally here. It's just such a cute minifigure to be able to add to your outdoor display for the holidays. I feel like this year's figure selection is pretty mid. I mean, the lows are low with that 212th Trooper. The Leia definitely needed a lot of work too, but the other figures are fine. They just don't reach the heights that we've seen in some previous years for advent calendar figures in my eyes, but still a solid selection minus the two at the back left and right. Now, when it comes to builds for this set, there's a few duds for me. I think the Star Destroyer doesn't do a whole particular lot for me. I really detest the ATST design. I know it's not easy to make these things in micro scale, but that doesn't mean I have to like what they make in micro scale, and this one in particular, not a huge fan of. By the way, it looks so awkward. I thought it was a Hoth ATST, but because it looks like it's walking on dirt, I'm assuming it's an Endor regular uh, ATST. And then lastly, we have the Endor bunker, which I thought I would like, and then I put together and I was like, yeah, I don't know about this one. This one's kind of lame, so not a big fan of the Endor bunker either. Just standalone doesn't work very well. Now the next three builds we have here, some very good little Endor ones, starting with the speeder bike, very much like this tiny little build. And we have the radar dish here, which looks amazing. I love the little trees around it, and you can even angle it slightly if you'd like. And then finally, we have a mini version of the Ewok Village, which I know a lot of people want a big version of, but, you know, this is okay. <laughs> you know, maybe it's not what you really want, but it is a mini Ewok village, and I think that's a cute little build to have included here, too. So the Endor builds here, at least these ones, are nice. Next, we have what I'm going to call some Disney Plus builds, starting with an Imperial shuttle that looks really good in flight mode for micro scale. I will say the landed mode doesn't 
quite hit the same. That looks awful. But in flight mode, it looks good. I do wish they had given it like a little stand, I think, because its flight mode is the superior look by a mile. I don't know why they didn't include a couple of cylindrical clear pieces and then one of the like dish pieces on the bottom that could have held this up just like this and it would have looked way better. So yeah, that that's just one of those small things. Um, then we have Mando's N1 Starfighter. Very nice micro build here. Lots of small details, but they nailed it. And finally, we have the Justifier, which looks pretty blocked but in micro scale makes sense. The hammer thing at the back can also move down almost all the way. It gets stopped by the plate underneath, unfortunately, but it still looks pretty good for a micro scale justifier. So another good three builds here. Here we have a few Clone Wars vehicles. My favorite of the three being the Halfire droid, which I think looks phenomenal. You got the red droid eye in there, big wheels, and then the missile launchers there. This thing is just lovely, and it kind of sits cool on the ground. And we have an AAT, which I thought I would like more, but I think the top not having like any dark blue on it makes it look a little bit awkward to me. But overall, still a pretty good micro model. Finally, the blocky bottom looking turbo tank, but still... A turbo tank, nonetheless, is always fun in micro scale, so gotta love that. And then we have these five builds. They all make use of minifigures in the set to be just that little bit more fun. The first one here being Omega's sled. She looks pretty good in there. Too bad there's not like a slope of snow for her to go down in the sled. Next, we have the micro command post for the clone trooper, and I can't help but feel that this might still be yet another uh, like small thing towards fans with the clone commander from last year. I mean, they included the worst clone trooper again and then put the same build. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that could go there if you're conspiracy theorist, but I think it's a good micro build nonetheless of a command station and it holds the clone trooper. So that looks cool. Throw him at the back. And we have Palpatine's chair, which looks good, but it won't like st sit on its own without Palpatine in the front. It just falls down. So just a small heads up on that. It can be a little bit awkward to get to sit. Like you have to push this pretty far forward to get the center of mass to be right. And that just looks bad. So we don't do that. That's what it looks like with Palpatine in the chair and ultimately sits much better on the ground with him in the chair. So I'm a fan of that. That's three pretty cool builds to go with your minifigs. Here we've got a glider for the Ewok, which I think is super fun. Definitely one that kids will really enjoy being able to fly their Ewok around with the glider. And then finally, I think the best build in the set is the Sap. It's not the best Sap we've ever seen, but for a advent calendar, I think it is fantastic to see. And then we have like the green grass piece underneath so it does stand really easily on the ground. You can take the battle droid, attach his curved arm onto the piece there, and just like that, you can have him flying around on the stap going into battle. I almost wish there was a, a Gungan instead of the clone trooper. I think would have been a better fit for like the Nabu style stap, but that is kind of the fighting combo that you're able to have there or not. I think this is a pretty easy buy for $45 this holiday season. It obviously has some flaws as I've pointed out, but the advent calendars are always really fun sets to build throughout the Christmas season, especially for kids on a day-to-day -day basis or even adults like coming home from work or school on your daily basis or in the morning or whatever, getting to open up just a small little Lego build can make your days that much better. So I think from that perspective, it's absolutely worth it. Maybe not everything in here is for you, but when there's 24 different things, I certainly wouldn't expect that to be the case for most people. So let me know what you guys think about this advent calendar down in the comments section below. I don't think it's like the all-time best advent calendar. I think it's like a 7 out of 10 advent calendar. It's got some stuff that I would have done significantly different. But hey, it's still a fun advent calendar for this year. So leave a like if you enjoyed. And you can check out more summer 2023 LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.